Oh, it's so slow. Right, that appears to be working. Turn off this stream. Mac is uh, stuttering a little bit. Let's get rid of some of these things. Let's post it over here. So I've upped the resolution on the stream today. Uh, the poor four-year-old Mac is uh, struggling just a little bit. I'm just going to share this to a couple of Slack rooms. is worth it. Bandwidth doesn't seem to be an issue, it's mostly just my Mac struggling to render it, I think. Frames per second is a little bit low. I can see where that is. A few stats. 20 frames a second. I 
hear the fan. Oh, geez. Uh, how can I turn that off? Hmm. Maybe. Where's my mic coming from? Tools, settings, preferences. Audio. Hmm. But it shouldn't be so. Uh, not much I can do without restarting the stream, so I'm going to leave it for now. But I'll have a listen back later and see if I can, if it's an issue. Okay, so let's just hide that. Slack takes up loads of resources. All right, so last time I uh, managed to get. Oh god, don't need that there. some of the basic repository mining what the overall goal is i added to it an issue to libraries today that is basically we currently collect dependency usage figures from open source repositories for all of the libraries that we index by passing out package JSONs and gem files and all of the other kinds of files that people put in their repositories that list the number of dependencies. And we do that at a point in time. So we'll go, oh, okay, what's the latest uh, commit on this repository? What does it look like right now? What files exist in it for listing dependencies, which are based off of this library here called the Bibliothecary which has support for lots of different kinds of files. We then index the uh, the files at the tip of the master branch or the default branch for that repo into the library's database. And then we can count up for a given library how many open source repositories list that particular library as a dependency in the last time we index it. What we want to be able to do which might take a couple of months to actually like be able to index all this, this data out, is to work out when, for each of those open source repositories, when a dependency was added, uh, when a dependency version was updated, or when a dependency was removed. So we can actually then go back in time and index uh, the full history of each open source repository and work out their kind of all of the activity that has happened around each dependency and that allows us to do some interesting things so we can then start to look at the trends for the increased usage of each library we can also see things like the reason why a change was made around a particular dependency so if someone locks a dependency to say an older version when they do that their commit message hopefully will contain some kind of description as to why they're doing it plus we'll also know who did it uh, and exactly when that happened locally and then when they pushed it up uh, it should keep the local time from when they committed it rather than just currently what we have is the time that we last saw we last indexed that repository which doesn't necessarily give you a good picture if someone added a dependency two years ago, but we only just found their repo, we'll say, oh, we just found a new dependent, a new usage of this uh, project. But actually, that might be a really old usage and the project might not be active anymore. So this will allow us to do some really cool things, especially to be able to say, like, in the last two weeks, 10 people added this library as a dependency, five people removed this library as a dependency, and uh, say a few people actually all change the version that they're using of this library to either a previous version or like locked it down rather than using a range which are all really strong signals of some change even though we don't necessarily what's, know what's changed or broken in a version we can actually then kind of raise that up as a hint or make that data available to people. So the repo miner project isn't concerned with the actual uh, 
like working out of all of those high level questions. All it wants to do is it wants to step through every commit on a branch and work out for each commit, were there any changes that it's interested in? Uh, initially, were there any changes in any of the dependency files? And then it also should have the ability to make, to do other kinds of mining in the future. So things like mining for license changes or easily mining out, say, the time zone that those commits were made in, or even things like were these commits made during work hours or were they done outside of work hours just by making these little miners that we've got here in this little minor folder. Currently there's two, but I'm going to continue to focus on the dependencies minor, which is quite beefy uh, and has the most specific use case for me right now. We got to a point where we had some basic specs where it could actually mine out some details from a commit, but the specs only really work on my laptop as it looks at its own uh, git directory. I think that's hidden in Atom, but uh, we're basically just saying analyze the current directory, uh, which I haven't tried pushing to Travis, but I would imagine wouldn't work very well. So we're going to want to stub out some of those uh, internals which are powered by rugged right now so we've got things like uh, plucking out the contents of a file currently uses the rugged uh, api and we want to be able to mock those things out for our test suite um, the other piece of missing functionality we have right now is here in the modified dependency section. That is the bit that I have been pondering about. Mostly, it's not too difficult to do, but what format should the data be stored in? Because we've got potentially a couple of different changes that we want to record uh, the previous and the uh, kind of before and after states of the commit. So for example, if a version number has changed, do we want to store the version it was before as well as the version afterwards? Or should we just say, here are the things that and have changed and here's how they look now. So that's probably the best area to have a poke around in right now. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, what was try and remember what's going on here. Um, so we're basically collecting up for each one of our. We look at all of the paths that have been edited, added, modified, or removed in that given commit, and then. Uh, we separate them out into those three groups which then will use the bibliothecary library to work out which one of those are which of those paths that were added modified or removed have been are related to dependencies if there are none then this one will skip doing anything then it does some stuff for brand new manifest files uh, because it can basically just analyze the contents of the file and say all these dependencies were added because we just saw this new file being added. Skipping over modified ones, we've got anything that was removed basically is just this whole dependency. If the whole manifest file has been removed, if someone deletes their package JSON, then we just say, oh, all of these things are gone. We detect. Uh, all the dependencies and for each one we add in to this data this file uh, removed all of these dependencies in the process and then all of those bits of data get attached to this commit along with any other miners that are running at the same time and then we have 
a little helper here that I guess can just be a private. It's not being used anywhere else, that's for sure. It's only being used in one place right now. Uh, I wonder if that even needs any. Leave that there for now. It potentially is useful for other miners, but until we actually write some other than this incredibly trivial email miner, we won't know if it's actually useful, so I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, then we have our modified manifest files, modified manifest files, which for each one, we're plucking out the before and the after. So what the manifest file looked like before this commit and after this commit in for this given branch. And then assuming that there are uh, some changes in each of them, which seems reasonable for now, uh, then work out the ones that were added, the ones that were removed, and then everything else is that that's probably not that's probably not a good thing to do is it so everything else is basically saying has been modified in the after dependencies so that's not necessarily true at all uh, we've got a list of dependencies that Uh, this is more like, I mean, it's a very horrendous method name, a uh, variable name. This is basically going, okay, well, for in the resulting manifest, ignoring anything that has been added and removed, then we have some dependency that are potentially modified, we need to then go through and find all of the ones that definitely have changed. Uh, so if we say modified dependency names equals Potentially modified dependency names dot map and ba -ba -ba. do name we want to see basically if it inside of our before and after for a given name has any information changed. So if we say uh, the after is something like this. And the before is pretty much the same. Select returns the name if the block evaluates to true. So we basically want to see if what things do we have available here? Let's just output one of these. See what happens. If we say false. Run the test suite. I want to see what gets logged out. I imagine quite a few things. So we basically have only three bits of information for a given dependency: the requirement, the name, and the type. And type being runtime or development. Uh, and that is 
can be any number of things. Some package managers have five or six different types of dependencies. But at least we know that there's only two fields that we need to care about checking. So we can say if the after requirement does not equal the before requirement or the after type does not equal the before type. So that basically is going to go, uh, I imagine that this is going to be the general case, uh, whereas type is a lot less likely to change. But if the requirement, as in version greater than version zero, is, is different, then we will return true. And that means that our modified dependency names will have some length of details, some amount of names in it. So let's just output that run that and see if we get anything, if our test data has any, anything useful to it. Mm. Excellent. So we have in, we have one commit where the dependency information of rake has changed, which is excellent. So taking in this Basically, it can be very similar to this. We'll map our names, in this case, rake. Uh, and for the moment, let's, we can basically do something like this. Hmm, what do we want to do there? I think, let's just take the after for the moment. So we take the after and we put in all of those details. Run that again, we should see a slightly different, oh no, uh, yeah, test, test should be the same. We obviously don't have much in the way of test coverage around here because we don't have one commit that changes all of those things simultaneously. Because that is the, looks like the second commit. Just put something in to test that. out. If our second commit, and our second commit is one, Expected that got nil. Uh, we don't know what commit that happened on. Let's have a look. Uh, log. Uh, it's actually the it's only the second commit where anything had changed, but it's really in one. right now but it's easier than trying to set it up in the console mine's 
times in here Ooh, that's interesting that one two three four five six seven did we miss a commit not pass. There definitely should be something inside there. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. Wow. Oh my. Did you really need to talk about that? Well, so that does tell you what the final result is. The only thing that I worry or wonder about is perhaps we should add in the previous if the previous is in this case has changed. So in here, I guess if we have our return that and we basically can go let's get our uh, after and we'll have the before equals before dependency the same again plug that out of the previous one and we can say requirement is not equal to that and we can do previous type equals before type if we add loads more I do it as a loop of sets of keys but there's only two right now uh, that should make the test fail again basically just have our extra field on the end. Let's just break this out. So we can now get the information that says that rake, the requirement for rake changed from around version 10 to around version 12. I'm intrigued about why that number is four. Uh, let's just have a look, P, 
analyzer dot length and then analyzer dot You just want to list out the messages for each. Thing. So this says there's 18 commits. Git log word count minus L says there's 18 commits, which seems correct. That's good that they both come out the same length. Uh, that definitely shouldn't be called second commit. That should be called fifth commit. Fifth, fifth. Spelling. Spelling and typing on Twitch always seem to go out the window. Okay, that feels better. Everything is uh, as expected. So that seems quite reasonable. We don't have anything that is testing the removed dependencies. That would be because I probably haven't actually removed any dependencies in this uh, at all. Yeah, so I just don't have that history yet. Not going to worry about that too much. But we have basically a fairly functional way of passing out dependency information for a given repository. The repo miner has a certain amount of information here. Something I want I remember wanting to come back to was uh, this repository method on repository was fairly horribly named. Uh, so I'm going to rename that to, it's good to hear, Mordecai, my fan, my poor laptop must be running on, I have no idea how much, uh, what's that, 60% energy impact is, it doesn't give you any kind of scale, it just gives you a number. What? I don't know what that means, but it's definitely eating a fair amount. But uh, coming back here, I wanted to rename this to rugged repository because repository.repository .repository seems fairly horrendous as a name. Uh, and then let's just see if there's any more repository, dot repository methods in the app in the project. Is the one rugged repository for a commit and then in here this one is called commit which also feels pretty terrible I want to call that rugged commit rugged commit rugged commit rugged commit Let's just check there. Dun, dun. We have a look through this file for commit. Don't need that comment anymore. Basically, if a comment is leaving me a, a to do that I've I've ignored, I'm just going to remove it at this point. So this is going to be called the rugged commit, and that's basically just to separate the difference between the repo miner commit and the underlying implementation. If we want to use this for, say, mining mercurial uh, repositories, then rugged is not going to work well for that. And then if we have a look at our if we search for dot commit in. Oh, God, it's slow. Come on. Right. Yep, that's the same there. Rugged commit and then in our email miner we 
have uh, that used twice. And I'll commit, I feel like I should have a couple of extra things attached to it directly, namely uh, the repository doo -doo -doo. and then we end up with the commit for this particular thing which has big dependency and a tree and some other stuff now how do you do a nice 2s your Ruby classes is in yeah inspect is probably the actual thing that I am interested in. Get to something like that. 2s returns name. Another way to do that is that Did la la some print but that feels a bit overkill considering that all I want to do is just lock out some basic details of the thing. Uh, so for a commit let's make it be called inspect. And there might be a way to do that. has some basic docs in the readme, otherwise we can do, do, do repositories, write objects, commits, time author, tree, parents. Target OID. for a tag. Okay, if you look at the actual docs, wherever they are. There's no link to the docs here, is there?
Rugged documentation. Rugged doc yeah, that seems reasonable. You'll find the commit object, which has all kinds of things. Uh, but, uh, diff epoch time. E headers parent time to hash tree tree ID. Same documentation twice. Oh, instance versus class method, perhaps. Tree OID. Oh, it looks like a looks like a bug there. Maybe. Might be able to send a progress to fix that. Tree ID. No. That the shard. out with something fairly reasonable because uh, the commit messages always seem to get have the new line attached to the end of them so we might just want to for prettiness sake do a is it a strip or is it a chop let's do a strip stripe strip Do we see the same? No, we do not. That is not. That tree ID is not what we want. Evidently. something that starts with a B4 mm. committer email time author OID maybe yeah that looks better Still not the right thing. Okay, jump in the console then. And then live slur. That. Uh, 
fifth commit dot rookie commit dot has it got an OID? Uh, it is just its OID, not its tree's OID. Intertwined, so we just commit all of that. All that. Uh, I don't think any of that changes too much. which we don't need to use it elsewhere and then this is the actual functionality of uh, working out modifying dependencies and there's still some logging in there that we need to remove GitHub, push, and I think we'll be able to go something like this, Dot analyze 
master. See how long that takes. I guess it's not going to be the quickest thing in the world. We might want to, I should write this, some of these things down, but we might want some way of recording. Ooh, that. There's definitely some broken documentation somewhere in there. We might want to add some way of measuring the progress or doing that kind of asynchronously so we can actually see what is being changed as part of that method because it's going to take a little while and ideally we can push that back out to the users uh, wow that's changed a lot since that last release the wonders of documentation built from master okay not going to go into that right now ignore that uh, we can write some usage in the readme once we think about it so do 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 make a new repository no in between Ruby and Markdown hurts my brain. I guess we could also potentially have a way of passing a block to the analyze method. Uh, analyze. That's how I use spell that. Why are you complaining about that? Is that not what I just did? Maybe I've got a typo. I don't know how you spell that. Analyze. Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. That looks fine to me. Maybe it's an Americanism. Does it want? Does it want a Z? Yeah. Oh, we're not going to be doing Americanisms here. Analyze. Back up 
have. So there are 862 commits in the library's repository that have had some kind of dependency update. That's pretty neat. Uh, Hello World obviously adds dependency information. What's the last one do? I guess the last one. Oh yes, there we go. We modified it and we removed the SAS dependency from the gem file. And for the gem file lock, we added SAS listen and modified common mark. Uh, to update its version. Nice. Kind of works. It's just a uh, make it a single line. We probably need some quotes around it. Okay, cool. I'm quite happy with that. Just going to commit this. Close that preview. You probably can't see what's actually showing on that. My little avatar in the way. I'm just writing the commit message down in the bottom right hand corner. Added. should see all of the commit messages where dependencies have changed and interestingly we'll get things like move some gems around add Google Analytics no more persistent HTTP party Roku fixate maybe, remove Elasticsearch gems, revert moving Elasticsearch gems. Oh, that, I didn't think of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get individual commits where there are reverts as well. We get the related issues, although Git isn't going to know what that means, so we'll probably have to pass those bits out somewhere else further down the line. We get if it's a merge commit from a pull request, we we'll get the information there. Lots of gem updates, some random things. 
testing pretty happy with that it's quite a lot there so let's bump that version and release another minor She does do the uh, V0.2.0. Commit. And then we can use rake release, which should publish a new version out to RubyGen. don't have a change log yet, I should probably add one of those. Attach capital. Change log.md, I think. If I look at the window again, keep a change log. Data. We can basically pick up something like this. We have an unreleased section. We have two versions. April, May, July, so 67. And I don't remember when the last one was released either. That was the 13th. What sections we have in the change log? Added, changed, deprecated, removed, fixed. So Sure, we can just say initial release. We got something in the bottom here. Initial release. Modify. 
eliminated. Depends on manifest files and some factoring of internal. Conduct, I uh, don't have a contributing MD, but I can pick up the one from Queen uh, CP Bibliothecary. Pretty sure this works for everything. Hickory, Travis CI, we're not on Travis CI yet, but we can try and set that up. Epo Miner, Code Climate, set that up, that a minute. Test Coverage, Code Climate, Twice. Go pick up the poodles from the groomers scene. Oh god, that's so. New pen. License not found. Oh, I don't know why that's complaining. Oh. What? Yeah, 
Yes, I have to push another commit before Travis will kick off. Circle. No, no, circle. Cool. Climb it. Test coverage. Now the badge is broken. Good. That is code climb it. That is code climb it. This doesn't pick it up automatically, I don't know. Open source, yes. Uh, how do we make it add something? Add repository. Do, 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 do. Andrew, 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 libraries, libraries, libraries. CFT, a repo miner. Add repo. Please wait. in here and then I'm guessing oh that's the wrong bridge but do a thickery simple curve
geht. coverage for our spec was the problem. Surprisingly high test coverage for such terrible tests. Catching a fair amount of it. Simon notices that my uh, efforts turn on do not disturb. I will turn that on now. Realize that with this anyone can also report other details, but I'm pretty sure no one cares. Come on, Travis, you can load a web page. CC test reporter ID. Now I don't. I think that I've changed that since I did anything with that. So I'm going to go look at what the bibliography one looks like instead. Okay. 
we find it be better again. Let's go that one. Add. Cool, I think that's about all I'm gonna do for now. Oh, one thing I did notice actually, might have time to fix, is when I went looking around trying different repos the other day, I noticed that the yarn, one of the yarn passing repos did not work as expected. Yarn parser repo. Fancies aren't erroring anymore. That's a good sign. And this is oh, it's installing all of the the bundles. Yep. Here we go. This particular one, whatever it was analyzing, came back with nils for everything. Why was that? Name yarn, but that bad. Let's commit here. Uh, let's go change into that directory. Yarn parser, get show. work I guess because it's testing on its own repository and Travis checked out the repository but great success test pass on Travis way build badges still not updating but greedy yarn file dot lock I wonder why that does not work then This does some stuff. It's using another library called Bibliothecary to take the yarn.lock file from here. I'm guessing this one works on the Push another commit before it run the test coverage. Manifest file you could dream of, and we paste this one in. I'm guessing there's some differences. Basically, you're going to say, oh yeah, you just added those more stuff. definitely found what it wanted to find so that's not an issue there okay never mind uh, continue to ignore that
preview is that the information returned from here currently has the platform and the manifest uh, path but it does not say if it is a lot file or something else uh, let's just put that out there and that's helpful because a change to oh right here a change to a dependency in a lock file is more interesting than a change to a dependency in uh, sorry not in a lock file so in a there's two kinds that the biblio theory library will return it will be a manifest which is the user editable one or a lock file which is the generated one so for each one of these things I want to go kind kind and then that's going to want to be added into everywhere that I don't think we have a lot of our committed in this repo, so I'm pretty confident we can just slap that in there. Yep, that's nice. So now I just need to get the coverage badge working. Not sure. And, um, last build, recent builds. Build completed. Test coverage. I wonder if that's because it needs it to finish running on Travis, but it should run quite fast on Travis second time around if all of the things have cached correctly. I think it caches Travis bundle things automatically. I mean, not installed, installing. Did that out? Sending it. 
over. If I refresh that, is it going to go? Oh yes. I know what you mean. No. Wait, there we go. Ninety percent test coverage. Wow. Signed with double quotes. You get a little crown next to your name if you put Twitch Prime, as in Amazon Prime. I guess the only way to get Twitch Prime is with an Amazon Prime subscription. Cool. Streaming again later this week. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel and it should notify you when I go back online. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you later in the week. How on earth do I stop this stream? <laughs>